Okay, so, you know, it's one of the most historic days in history. You know, as I always say, it's times like this where you wish you were a calendar. <laughs> um, um, you do but, always say that. Yeah, I, I've always said that. But, you know, a lot of people were, were, were looking to us. This is one of the greatest in terms of scale, not the best thing to ever happen. But like one of the biggest historical events ever, you saw all the journalists who were saying things like, wow, talk about days that are going to be recorded. Uh, <laughs> and you were looking to us, you know, going, well, it's the biggest event of the year. Where's the greatest joke of the year? And um, we wanted to save it for the show. We've been in the lab for several days working on a joke, working on the perfect topical joke about Trump shooting. Um, and I'm, I think I'm ready to present it. Let's hear it. Okay. So, um, for the start of this joke, I'm Obama for the first part. I'm Obama. I'm going to uh, divide the country. And then for the second part of the joke, I'm the guy who shot Trump in the joke, not my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my beer. That's what he says to Obama <laughs> saying, I'm going to divide the country. And there, there it is. Feel free to use that at your office, your place, your, yeah, you know, your place of work. If you're your a blue AA collar meeting. worker, you're not that. No, <laughs> keep that, keep that away from there. Um, if you're a prisoner, use this on the yard, <laughs> use it on grinder, use it on Raya, use it wherever. Just enjoy because we worked really hard on it and we hope you like it. Well, folks, it's uh, it's Monday, July fifteenth. Uh, Will Menneker here. I'm back. I'm back in back in the stew. I'm back out on the uh, West Coast. And uh, to follow up and feel like this is this is a time that we're you know we, we couldn't be more thrilled to doing the show. It's just like Newsweek magazine. They're they're living up to the name. This was a week of news. Yeah, they they may as well call themselves like News Hour because that's how <laughs> often it's happening. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, uh, I, I just want to say, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you've been following on Twitter, but uh, Amber Rallo, Matt's wife, has, you know, uh, uh, updated everyone. on there. Matt had a little bit of a, a hiccup yesterday, but I just want to assure all our listeners he was not seriously lingered at the battle box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Former Chrisman, not seriously Former lingered. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we will, we, he's back. To, he'll be back to the battle box uh, uh, shortly. And I would like to say, talk about uh, uh, best jokes about Trump shooting. Matt got off the best post about Trump getting shot from the hospital. <laughs> yeah. No, it was really, it was really good. And I said, like, there are people who had like, you know, great days they no hospital visits at all. They didn't even have to like put on a band aid. That's how good their day was. And they all they could come up with was like, "Oh, he's doing Kingdom style." <laughs> <laughs> like, "Oh, I know what I'm going to be talking about in my better help session." Just bullshit. No uh, one had it. Damn. Think but, about all of the uh, Halloween costumes that are <laughs> actually that's that's a free one. You know, shriek some ketchup on your face, uh, which for most of your listeners, uh, they've already got it there. They just need to find a suit secondhand. Uh, uh, welcoming today's guest, Catherine Krieger. Hello, hello. Nepotism girlfriend. Yes, I read the subreddit. Shut the fuck up. There's still a subreddit. Uh, no. Uh, don't look but, uh, for it. I was laughing all last night about get, getting getting accidentally shot by the Secret Service at a Trump rally, and you, and you you wake up on you cross the river and you wake up on the uh, you've rode ahead to the other side. You wake up and then there's just a sea of McDoubles. I mean, like, what is heaven supposed fishes. to look like? You know, just, if it's then, Burger King, I'm saying send me to the other place. <laughs> and a smiling Trump just welcoming you to Valhalla. <laughs> and I, I also, I, I, I really, uh, the, 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 the other guy, not the shooter, the other guy who was killed uh, after the shooting, his last reply on Twitter was to Cat Turd. Well, has Cat Turd said anything? I feel like Cat Turd should put out a statement being like, this is the, la the last thing that crossed this guy's mind was, I hope Cat Turd 2 responds. <laughs> and I saw just yesterday, someone, someone shared this. Someone replied to his reply to Cat Turd saying, you are a legend, sir. Following. <laughs> 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 uh, man I, now i'm thinking about like how many followers i would get if i um you know died tomorrow <laughs> damn that would be that almost makes it worth it <laughs> well i don't know like just some uh 
there's some some initial reactions to. I mean, there's there's wow. too too much to talk about because I mean we're we're gonna get to Biden's best week ever, but like culminating with probably the best thing that's ever happened to Donald Trump. But Catherine and I were uh, in a car driving up Mulholland Drive on the way to a wedding yesterday. Uh, shout out Paul and Lauren when we got the news that someone took a shot at Trump at his rally in uh, Pennsylvania. I, uh, wow. What can you say? I mean, my initial reaction was, how are you going to be from Western Pennsylvania and be that bad a shot? And then come to find out that this guy had been kicked out of his high school rifle yeah. club for being terrible at shooting. I have to say, like, when a guy who looks like that is really <laughs> shitty at guns, it's like, damn, like, how do you not, like, curse God? <laughs> if you, like... You have one of those like huge foreheads, like one, like a like, like um long flowing mane, long of fl greasy like, hair, the worst type of hair. Yeah, where it's like partially balding, <laughs> but like long and wispy, like, like and God forbid you can never shave your head because like, no one wants to see more of that skull. <laughs> and usually, like the consolation for guys who look that fucked up is like they have made up history's greatest shots. <laughs> you know, there is there, there there's that like one Canadian guy that throws off the average, the guy who like uh, got one of the longest sniper kills ever, and he just you know he like looks normal. But for the most part, like Carlos uh, Hitchcock or whatever the fuck his name was, <laughs> the guy from uh, Vietnam, Simo uh, Holic, they looked awful. <laughs> they looked disgusting. <laughs> and they all, like, of course, like later in life, you know, Carlos Hitchcock and Simo Holic, like they, they had further mitigating factors. Like they, all those guys had like horrible burns or got into car accidents, but they looked bad before that. <laughs> Uh, but to look like that and you got kicked out of the riflery club, like, what do you do? What do you even get into? You can't join a monastery. There's none of that. Oh, well, what you get into is taking a shot at the president. Yeah. <laughs> I was, uh, we, uh, we were talking to, uh, Grace from Girl God yesterday and she said when she, uh, uh saw the, uh, saw the, saw the profile of the shooter, she, her heart sank because she knew instantly that this was a kid who played Magic the Gathering. <laughs> and the Magic the Gathering community, the community is, is going to be very bad for the community. Now, my uh, my second reaction uh, on the way to the wedding, uh, uh, seeing the news of this, is in America, nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants to work anymore. I'm talking about the shooter, the Secret Service, the state police. It's just uh, nobody wants to work anymore. Everyone's cutting back. No one no one has heard of a uh, 45 caliber uh, gun anymore. You know, like really would be assassins in this country have such an awful record. Yeah, I don't. So the Secret Service, like they had a, they had a beat on this guy, like before he shot, like they saw this horrible looking man. Boy <laughs> he was already the in the scope. Well, like I, you know, even if like he didn't have a visible rifle and I was a sniper and I saw him, I would be like, I'm just going to put well, my scope on him just for fun. Just to see what I he's going to do. I hope I can kill this guy because of how awful he looks. Well, uh, but, and then <laughs> thankfully he like pulled out a gun and the secret service guy was like, yes. <laughs> but I think, I don't know. Like he got, everyone has a bad day. You know, <laughs> I've certainly blown it in Counter-Strike. <laughs> no, yeah, like, forget about Rainbow Six Siege. I'm not even good at that game. Uh, that is, uh, that is a, that's probably what real life is more like, Rainbow Six Siege. It's probably not a lot like Counter-Strike. It's probably a lot more like Siege. And Siege is so hard, and there are so many angles, and you fucking press Q, and you take out a drone. That's probably what was going on. He was like, oh, I have the shot. I'm going to kill this ugly guy. And then he, you know, he pressed his, his, uh, I saw on Twitter, someone said he was wearing a Kabbalic bracelet. <laughs> he pressed his Kabbalic bracelet and he opened up a, you know, like a, a, a scroll down menu to talk to Yahweh. And he's like, ah, I don't want this. <laughs> and then the, the guy had already shot the teleprompter and he was like, fuck. Uh, oh no. Honest, uh, honestly, iconic, like very early 2000s celebrity to be trying to bring Kabbalah back. Yeah. yeah. Was Madonna. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Britney Spears did it for a minute there. I think like, I think it's just like a, he was honestly just wearing like a normal, like, you know, one of those operator bracelets we've never heard of where it's like, Oh, you, you wear this like red and black live strong bracelet in honor of like the Navy seal who was sentenced to one year for flattening an entire <laughs> Okinawan family <laughs> with a, with an Osprey that he was driving drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to get this guy out of Leavenworth. 
But like, just like crazy people on Twitter were like, "Oh, it's he's it's a Jewish fig because there are so many Jewish stripers <laughs> in Western in Pennsylvania." <laughs> And I guess my uh, my 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 final thought uh, about the Trump shooting and like this is this is this is one of these things that like it seems to happen a lot in this country of like uh, apocal era defining moments that apocryphal uh, uh, apocal apocal okay ep- ep- epic. all right I'm just trying to introduce a mispronunciation then <laughs> well it wouldn't be the first time at least for me but uh, no what I would say is that it just seems to be one of these like supposedly earth shattering moments where everything changes that I have like at the same time, a bone deep feeling that will change nothing and people will mostly forget about by next week. No. Yeah. (laughs) It's not fucking 1982. (laughs) Everyone's like locked in to whatever they think. Like, okay. The Obama to Trump to Biden voters, they were already going to vote for Trump this time. (laughs) You know, I, I guess like, yeah, my, my initial reaction was if it wasn't already said before, it is almost impossible to imagine Trump losing this election now. And this is, an, this is a sentiment borne out by like anonymous comments made by like almost every senior Democrat over the last day or two. It's where like, they're just this like, is the last thing we wanted to happen. <laughs> yeah. well, they're just like, yeah, we'll resign ourselves to him winning this election. It's like, oh, okay. All I right. mean, I, I'm sorry. The media of him like with blood streaked on his dumb face and then like, like fist pumping, like it's the only thing that made me like, you know, immediately have inside job voices because like, or vibes, uh, not voices. Um, <laughs> I was also having, in, I have inside job uh, voices in my head a lot. One of Catherine's alters. Was, yeah. uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, but, but, but yeah, like, I mean, yeah, like you said, the, bumping, the, the, yeah. the photo, the photo is all people are going to remember in this and it's all that's going to matter because it's going to be in like every re-election campaign photo. Well, that's what I thought. Online until- ceramics is putting it out on a shirt for some reason. <laughs> That's what I thought until the president made the best speech ever (laughs) that saved America. Thankfully, former Trump is not seriously injured. But in America, we resolve our difference at the battle box. Yep. Uh, Speeches can change the world, especially now. Former Trump seriously injured at like, ballot box at ba- were, battle box battle bots. There were multiple takes of that. <laughs> yeah. And they and they got the one where he goes, thankfully former Trump is not seriously injured. <laughs> uh we a, as Americans, we solve our problems at the battle box. Then they tried to they the people who run Biden's account on Twitter tried to like they did this really sneaky thing where they took the funniest lines from the speech, like seriously lingered in battle box <laughs> and like retranscribed them to what they thought they were supposed to be where yeah. they're like, they, they had Biden say on Twitter, American politics should never be a battlefield or God forbid a killing field. And it's like, no, I heard him. He said, American politics should never be a ba- little battle fella. <laughs> God, God forbid. <laughs> Uh, there's some good reactions. I, I, I feel like so. I'm wondering if you saw DJ Academics live reaction. Yeah. To Trump and he was like, they're shooting Uncle Trump. They're shooting <laughs> Uncle Trump. Yeah. I but, like I like 50 Cent's reaction. Oh, yeah, yeah. He put Trump's face on, uh, over the, the Get Richard Die Trying album while he was playing Many Men. Wish death oh. on me. <laughs> <laughs> many, many orcs wish death on me. Uh, it wouldn't have gone like that. It wouldn't have gone down like that if the shooter was a jock. That's all I'm saying. Five centimeters from glory. Yeah, I just, so the shooter, I do appreciate him being like, just sort of like uh, the type of fuck up that every kind of American can recognize. Because I feel like if it was too far in the other direction, like if he was either like, he was, a, you know, he subscribed to Jeff Tiedrick <laughs> or, you know, too far in the other way where it was like all like, black sons and like, yeah. stupid bullshit you've never heard of and they're like oh, if you eat peanuts you're gay it's <laughs> where they put all the gay stuff in um if it was too too far in any direction you know bad i'm not saying civil war people are too lazy for that but like a worse outcome tons of really annoying posts <laughs> yeah. um you know more attention but because this guy was he didn't, I don't even think he knows who the president is. <laughs> He's like that. He was that type of guy. He, he was a registered Republican who like gave $15 to a pro Biden pack the day that he was inaugurated. So just like a, confu- like <laughs> he doesn't know what's going on. I think he did both those things by accident, like register as a Republican and give money to he Biden. He just checked the wrong box. Yeah. He was like, oh, damn it. 
<laughs> oh, I thought it was a slot machine. Uh, the worst take I saw was Alex Garland uh, vindicated. Oh, no, God. No, no. Absolute no. worst take. Absolute worst take because uh, if you were vindicated, the last 20 minutes of the movie would have happened. That would have been vindication. <laughs> then I would be like, credit where credit's due. Uh, yeah, and there was no... Famously, what that movie is about, you have to cycle out the old women to bring in new women. <laughs> That's what that movie's about. It's like, this bitch is pretty old. She's, let's she's get starting a new to look woman. a little busted. Yeah, let's, let's get a new woman. Let's get Priscilla in here. There aren't any new women. <laughs> They're just not no one's introduced them. a new woman in 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I've got a woman here I'd like to introduce. Did you guys see Melania Trump's statement no. about her husband getting shot? This is real Latina shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, one of the best, uh, it's one of the best statements I've, I've seen. So I should like to read a little from it now. I'm thinking of you now, my fellow Americans. We have always been a unique nation. America, the fabric of our gentle nation is tattered, but our courage and common sense must ascend and bring us back together as one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. um, when I watched the violent bullet strike my husband, Donald, I realized my she life. She wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, she wasn't yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, she hasn't been there um, for any of his campaign or his trial for the record he's been DMing a certain high schooler from western Pennsylvania <laughs> <laughs> yeah. think about how disappointed she must yeah. be oh, as my, as oh my god she was yeah. so close yeah. yeah, she was so close to being free forever she was so fucking close Are and then 72 hours later it's like you have to have dinner with JD Vance like <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that in a second but um uh, yeah, she says, when I watched that violent bullet strike my husband, Donald, I realized my life and Baron's life were on the brink of devastating change. Alex says she doesn't mention Donald, Eric. Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, we were on the brink of devastating change. I am grateful to the brave Secret Service agents and law enforcement officials who risk their own lives to protect my husband. To the families of the innocent victims who are now suffering from this heinous act, I humbly offer my sincerest sympathy. You need to summon your inner strength for such a terrible, for such a terrible reason saddens me. A monster who recognized my husband as an inhuman political machine. Recognized him? <laughs> yeah. Recognized. She, she's being like, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> she, she, Though that's a normal reaction to have when you see my husband. You shouldn't do it. You should I let guess. your better, or better angels prevail. <laughs> yeah. A monster who recognized my husband as an inhuman political machine <laughs> attempted to wring out Donald's passion, his laughter, <laughs> ingenuity, love of music, and inspiration. He, well, does, he does love Macho he does, Man. Yeah. He does that's love a, music. Yeah. He lo yeah. Yeah, he loves music. That was the <laughs> one thing where it's like, okay, she does kind of know him, yeah. you know? He loves Macho Man, YMCA, the Cat soundtrack, yep. and Phantom of the Opera. Yeah, he's like, he loves music the way a baby loves music. <laughs> like, he loves happy, happy when you know it. Um, the core facets of my husband's life, his human side, were buried below the political machine. <laughs> this is poetry. This is this so wow. weird. Yeah. yeah it, does she have a chapbook coming out? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Donald, the generous and caring man who I have been with through the best of times and the worst of times. Uh, TK mm. years. Uh, <laughs> someone filled us in. Uh, let us not forget that differing opinions, policy, and political games are inferior to love. Our personal, <laughs> our personal structural and life commitment until death is at serious risk. Political concepts are simple when compared to us, human beings. She she actually might have written this. this yeah, is, no, no, this, this is yeah. This seems this seems like it was run through ChatGPT or Google Translate. No, this or is, yeah. that, is, that is the product of like you know someone who the weird way that they did education in those countries. Uh, <laughs> those back when they were countries. just like a couple big countries, how it should be, um, <laughs> where it's like you had to you had to do some weird test. Uh, you had to translate. Uh, I don't know, like uh, Tolstoy would be considered like reactionary, probably, right? You'd have to translate some other guy, and then they would be like a you, former Nazi. Yeah, you, no, this she was raised during you know this was before the fall of the USSR, and so they probably put her into like a polytechnic school for thirteen year olds. Where they le they learn how to write like this. I, I think they sent her to the Red Sparrow School. Yeah, <laughs> um. it's very it's very it's very moving. It's like yeah. Michelle Bungler could yeah. move me like no. that. Uh, Michelle, if this 
Then, she, she would put out, like, my husband's passion for music. His current Spotify top 10 is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With Jill, like, if this happened with Jill, she would just post, like, a gif of a cartoon cat praying. <laughs> Oh, she, we're she, hoping my husband gets better. She's posting a BoJack Horseman meme. <laughs> yeah. Being like, what you has a sad uh, because your husband got shot. Yeah, and, but this is beautiful. We are, you know, politics is simple compared to the complexity of our lives. Political concepts. Politics is inferior. Politics, to political love. concepts are yeah. simple when compared to us human beings. Of all of these things, the greatest of which could be love for people, <laughs> uh, including your loved ones who are close to you. We are all humans and fundamentally instinctively we want to help one another. American politics are the are only one vehicle that can uplift our communities. Love, compassion, kindness, and empathy are necessities. And let us remember that when the time comes to look beyond the left and right, beyond the red and the blue, we all come from families with the passion to fight for a better life together while we are here in this earthly realm. I mean, you can't mm. say that the shooter wasn't expressing whatever he thought his passion was. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like, I think we have a real passion gap in, you know, American youths. They, they don't know what they want to do. So, you know, I think we should commend him for chasing something. You know, all those movies uh, that girls post screenshots of. <laughs> Not all girls. Get, name like name a one. A certain type of girl. Oh, thank you for saying not all girls. Well, yeah, because there are different kinds. <laughs> There's like a million of them. There's different kinds of girls. But a certain type of girl posts, they, they love posting screenshots of movies where it's like, you know, a really narrow shouldered man <laughs> and a beautiful, gorgeous knockout babe. Uh, and it's in black and white. And the girl is saying something like, but isn't love giving up all the things that make you temporal or some bullshit, you know, <laughs> that type of shit. All those movies are made in like Slovenia or the Czech Republic. Just like so porn. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, you know, after the fall of communism, they went from making that to fuck team five. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, when's the sequel coming out, by the way, <laughs> please understand. I do not know. <laughs> fuck team five is the name of the team. Uh, the name, the of the, common misconception. Yeah. yeah. Um, now I'm thinking about like fuck team five, but they have to do what like the Marvel franchise does where it's like, they have to keep digging deeper for more and more <laughs> yeah, five team team. members. Like they're doing, they're doing like the, the Eternals, but it, uh, fuck team five. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. Kumail, Kumail is getting like horrific silicone shots into his cock. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, like the, the news continues because like outside of Trump getting his era shot, we did, we do have a VP announcement today. Yeah, and that's, that's right. Chapo is responding to news that happened today. <laughs> it's yes. possible. Uh, it's, it's uh, Ohio Senator JD Vance, a, a long time friend of the show. Remember our Hillbilly LZ episode. And I just like to say, I, I feel this pick because I, you know, as someone who was also a Southern boy, whose mother sold him to the circus and who, <laughs> and who currently wears a beard to hide how fat his face is. I find this a very relatable VP pick. And I think it's a kudos to Trump for doing it. He's thinking outside the box. This is, um, is the Trump choking? <laughs> Cause this is like, this is so, this is, you could not make a worse pick. This sucks. Uh, within hours, I was reminded that JD Vance is in a group chat with a bunch of 15 year old groipers. <laughs> <laughs> Josh and your Venom posted the screenshots and it just it's sickening he's like, he's like hey fam I'm standing on business <laughs> hey fam on folks and them can you send me a picture of you with your shirt off so I can send you so I know what size you are <laughs> my my first thought was um uh, Glenn Close has to be really upset because they're gonna make her wear the fat suit that she wore for the movie <laughs> on the campaign trail again that she didn't she she had to go that ugly for a film. Poor poor thing. And then she still didn't win an Oscar. Is it JD Vance in the group chat? Uh, cool griper, Ahmed. Want to bring it to the White House? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's it's just like, what if Trump does Lev Parnas again? You know, and they were like, okay, you're president now. You said you wouldn't do Lev Parnas again. You did it. What the fuck? And he gets impeached or like again health, health reason or whatever, right? Something happens, um, uh, you know, a kid with a more normal skull shoots him. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that should happen, <laughs> but I, I'm a threat. Of big, mo <laughs> big moment for phrenology. <laughs> well, what if, you know, he's incapacitated one way or the other. JD Vance would be 
we've never seen a president that unpopular. <laughs> it would it would be like worse than Francois Hollande, right? <laughs> like, there's no way. The biggest loser in the VP sweepstakes, not the first person to point this out, but Tim Scott. <laughs> Tim Scott yeah. got married. He got married to pick this up. And what's he going to do now? Oh, my God. Imagine this, being the fucking poor beard he married. He he had to look a pussy in the eye for the first time in his life. Imagine the trauma, <laughs> the generational trauma that will, that uh, will cause. That, like, it probably is, like, it's the same tone as uh, on Game of Thrones, uh, Tyrion and Sansa's wedding. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just probably the same, like, baseline feeling. <laughs> oh, man, that's so sad. Like, he's... The moment he got probably got he probably found out like a day before, right? And he's like, God damn it. And the woman he's marrying, he's like, What? What's wrong? Yeah. And he's like, I have cancer. I also like before before I got like the news notification about him picking Vance, I got one about like um Marco Rubio says he's not the pick. And like, was that ever being thought of? It would be like it would be like Jeb Bush being like, It's not gonna be me this time. Yeah. Um Yeah, no, that would like <laughs> I, I hope, by the way, I, I, I've heard that Trump does not like men with facial hair, and I really hope he makes JD shave his beard. Oh my God. That would be. Speaking of uh, skull shapes that we're going to get to see, he's going to make JD shave it and then be like, oh my God, what the <laughs> fuck? Put, put it back. Put yeah. it back. Is this... he's, he's going he's gonna, to like charter a, the last Concord in the world <sighs> and charter, charter a, a Concord flight at Mach 2. From America to South Korea for like <laughs> life saving buccal fat removal surgery. This is like in the early days of dating Will. I was like, oh, I want to see you with your face shaved. You know, like when was the last time you were, were cleanly shaved? And I, you know, toxically went as far as joking that I would just shave a stripe out of it while he was sleeping. Um, but I, but I know that were that ever to happen, the relationship would fall yeah. apart. Unfortunately, yep. uh, I, I'm pot committed to this. It would be like the scene in Force Majeure where <laughs> you know, <laughs> where he runs. I was just, I was ready to get, be raring to go to talk about, talk about Biden's week because there was a moment last week before it was at the NATO press conference where he referred to President Zelensky as President Putin. The one thing you don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. The one at thing. The 75th anniversary of NATO conference referring to Zelensky as Putin. Two weeks after, after NATO officially told Zelensky like, hey, um, that was cool how you, um, like two thirds of your male population has died for us. <laughs> You're actually, um, too corrupt to join NATO. You can join if you win the war. <laughs> the thing that's impossible yeah. to fucking do now. And then, like, to add, add insult to injury, <laughs> Joe calls him Putin. So I, I saw, yeah, so I saw, so I saw his Putin gaffe. And, and this was before his. But, 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 but President Putin, I want to, I want to beat him so bad. Uh, uh, and then, then his then, eyes, his eyes went so wide. Yeah, uh, it was so bad that yeah, like even he knew he's like, oh, 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 oh shit. brother, I stepped in. He it. was like, yeah, I guarantee, like, I'm sure you saw the thing about like uh, how his aides even print out like walk, uh, take one step in front of the other to reach stage. I'm sure they wrote like really big on the teleprompter like. Do not call him Putin. Do not. <laughs> Do not. Well, you shouldn't just put the word Putin on the teleprompter because yeah. that's that's asking for trouble. But so like and yeah, and that was before his 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 uh, prepared remarks and press conference, which you know I've been assured from luminaries such as Lawrence O'Donnell was the best address on foreign policy that a president has ever given. Mm -hmm. A most. It's like being taught international relations by the most learned scholar in the world. It was it was in depth. He had a mastery of the issues. He talked, uh, you know, unscripted, and you know, there, yeah, there's a few bumps along the road. But <laughs> I wanted to say, when I saw him refer to Zelensky as Putin, I got this like sinking feeling in my stomach that the fun was soon to be over, right? Like I was like, we we had our fun with this, but like this, I keep thinking this can't go on. 
Then like a half an hour later, I'm like, nope, it's it's going on. It's not going to stop. And what I want to say is- <laughs> The fun will never end. The fun will never end. But what I want to say is that like, you know, over the last week or so, we, there, we saw this like nascent, um, nascent sort of like uh, trying trying to jumpstart an effort among Democratic Party grandees to switch out the ticket. To, 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 to get Biden to step step down and either give it to Kamala or someone else. Or Felix Biederman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, still not old enough. <laughs> still not. And what I want to say about that is that like be, because I had the feeling that the fun was going to stop, I, I started developing an intense contempt and hatred for everyone in the Democratic Party, especially the Pod Save America Johns, especially the Pod Save America guys. Call who, it out. Who are desperately trying to swap out Biden at the top of the tip, ticket. No, no, you cannot get out of this. This is what you wanted. Buy the ticket. Yeah. You, the bought you bought it. You bought it. Enjoy it. No takesies, Mackies. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay. You broke, what, you buy, you broke, you broke, you buy it. All the stuff you said in 2020 and 2021 where it's like, he's the only guy. He's going to restore the soul of the nation. Does that stop being true <laughs> just because he doesn't know who anybody around him is? <laughs> No, this is what you wanted. Stick with your guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's too risky. It's too risky right now that to change the ticket. No, you're stuck with it. And I and I and I, and I hate their I hate everyone's cringing attempts to walk this back after nine fucking years of this shit. Nine years of this shit. He was already out to lunch to, during to, his to, first campaign. To, to give us Biden. This is what we got. You're not getting you're not getting out of this. And also, I think like the what I really felt was like. The, what, the only good outcome in this election, you know, short of both of them, you know, paying the ferryman, riding on ahead, <laughs> crossing the Shining River, the only productive political, the morally, strategically, spiritually, the only thing worth rooting for in this election is that Joe Biden's suffering continues, is that he, ha yes. he must continue to suffer and be humiliated and to have the capstone on his life be a legacy destroying humiliation, the likes of which is unprecedented in American history. Yes. Months more of horrific humiliations. <laughs> um, I didn't think we could get much worse. And then he said, battle box and battle. <laughs> Just, and we're going to get worse than that. It's going to get better. It's, gonna, it's going to get it's better. Gonna, it's going to get better. And then for him to lose and then for him to live exactly long enough to get to Trump's inauguration. And then he dies. And that's his legacy. That's, I mean, it's still not quite what he deserves, but it's pretty close. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty good. It, I mean, like, but good like, night, I, sweet I'm prince. like it's, it's, it's a, it's a thing that is a very realistic possibility. And this is the closest we're ever going to get yeah. to justice in this country. Yeah. And we're seeing it. We're living through it now. And uh, a few other highlights from the, uh, the Biden press conference that I thought were wonderful. My favorite moment of the press conference is when he uh, he said, uh, my, my numbers are better in Israel than they are here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. And which but, is not even it's fucking not even true. true. Israel is not... the only country on the planet outside the United States of America that likes Trump. Yeah. Well, no. they want Trump more than they Biden. They want Trump more than Biden. Miriam yeah. Adelson just gave Trump like $30 billion. <laughs> well, yeah, that shows how much the bear hug strategy is working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he like... He like he, he torpedoed probably like his best shot against Trump was young voters. He torpedoed it for Israel and they don't even fucking like him. <laughs> they fucking hate him. And the other the other big thing to come out of the, the press conference in the last week or so that I got to talk about is uh, the scoop. In White House meetings, Sanders pressed top aides for Biden to outline a 100-day agenda for working class, <sighs> including medical debt forgiveness. Up. Sanders and AOC threw Biden a huge political lifeline and want progressive agenda at the center of the campaign. See Biden as best chance for their policies and policy, like, for their policies and policies as Biden's best way out. This yeah, see, a, this, is, yeah. this is, what a great calculation. This is win-win. <laughs> Because on one hand, you get to marry yourself to an incredibly unpopular, historically fucking unpopular and, and candidate. And your political project. You, you, your political project, every candidate that comes after you in your mold, you get to marry them to one of the most unpopular presidents ever. One of the most farcical, unpopular presidents. Genocidal. Who tarnished, who tarnished everyone associated with him as fucking liars as completely dishonest as concealing everything from the American people. 
you get, you get to associate yourself with that forever. Um, you get to lose, you get to be blamed for that. But then, you know, on the other side, if he wins, he also gets to not do those things. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He also gets to not do those things, which is why is he not doing them now? Like, was- is he like, uh, like, like, is the assumption like he he's going to get super majorities in both houses? I mean, congressional polling is like it, it, it's surprisingly skewing Democratic despite Biden, but like it's just like in either event, I don't know. He's He's not a man of action, I would say. Um, this is how you know uh, Biden knows he's going to lose or the people around him know he's going to absolutely. lose. Absolutely. You know, like, same with, like, uh, he's been called, like, the most progressive president in history. But anytime he'll, he does stuff like, you remember when he was like, oh, I would I would love to sign the PRO Act. Um, and it's like, that's how you know, like, it's never even getting out of committee. Like, it's never going to get yeah. a vote. Yeah. yeah. Like, he only supports progressive, uh, you know, uh, a progressive policy agenda when he knows that, like, there's no risk of it ever even crossing his was, desk. Uh, com- com- coming out, spending that hot fire being like, we're getting rid of medical debt. Okay, sure. And, like... He didn't even yeah. get rid of student debt. <laughs> like, what? Um, but, yeah, like, for, for fucking... For, for Bernie and AOC, this is, like... This Quite is poor. The, this is the equivalent... Of being on the Titanic after it hit the iceberg and being like, look, we made a deal with the captain that's going to pay yeah. off when we get to New York. <laughs> like, trust me, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be in a real position to, to build a better ship when we arrive in New York. Just as soon as we get out of the North Atlantic, um, yeah, this we're, we're going politically... to be in charge of this ship here. And this is a politically smart bargaining chip that we <laughs> yeah. have. Uh... When you say, Catherine, you're like, uh, fool me once, shame on you. Fool, fool, me... <laughs> fool me three times, uh, shame on me again. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shame on you again. Uh, wait, what? Uh, yeah. President Putin? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, I know America is certainly not France as far as uh, the- Thank, the, thank God for that. Like, as far as the the institutional strength or organization, you know, much less the raw numbers of the left in France, right? It, it, it just, like, um, they're very far ahead of us. Uh, and who knows if we could ever get there. But Melanchon, if he's shown anything- He's shown that, like, not immediately folding and going, okay, I'm going to push this enormously fucking unpopular doomed president to the left, that it's a smarter choice to maybe, I don't know, in the short run, make things a little harder for yourself by not marrying yourself to this incredibly unpopular figure that voters might reward you for some integrity later as they have. But no, no, God forbid, God forbid anything difficult is done. God forbid you make any stance that alienates anyone that pisses anyone off. It'll, and it'll, I know, I know that like, like people have said, Oh, if they, if they called for Biden to resign, then the party would consult, consolidate around him. First of all, Oh wait, so he wouldn't do it. <laughs> like what's happening now. Yeah. Who gives a fuck? Second of all, they don't even have to say anything. They don't even, they don't have to go. They don't have to go, you know, they don't have to go and make that the entire focus of their output that Biden has to leave, but they just don't have to fucking glaze him like they are. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a bad fucking unforced error. It reminds me of like, uh, and I think of this often, there was like, you know, after Joe Biden won the first time, uh, you know, the only time, um, there was like a big piece in like Politico or something where what's his face came out and was like, like all of the like NAACP, all of these like black voter groups were like, all right, uh, you you can't keep p- counting on us forever. After they had already like delivered their voters to Biden, they were like, our bargaining position is better than ever. Uh, and Biden just told them to fuck off because he was like, you already gave me the thing that was your bargaining chip. Yeah. And by the way, one of my favorite things over the last couple of weeks, as as people began to be more um, adamant in their like, you know, like like people with longstanding Democratic credentials started to like tentatively come out first through first through ventriloquizing George Clooney to get George <laughs> Clooney to say something that they were like, yeah, of course we've all known he's been brain dead for weeks now, but thank God George Clooney finally said something. The Casa, we, the Casa we, we guy. Yeah. Uh, it's it's <laughs> yeah. good. It's much better than Jose Cuervo. Brought to you by those who drink it. But, uh, but like, but, the, but then the reaction of, of the Biden Fedekin, the Biden, the Biden loyalists, <laughs> The way they are pushing down the black voter button, I'm seeing nothing, oh but, my nothing God. but white people just being like, 
Y'all notice anything about all the people talking talk about Biden uh, dropping out? <laughs> yeah. the, sounds pretty quiet to me. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like wait a second. Like the people who want him to drop out want him to be replaced with Kamala Harris, and they're like, that's racist, misogynistic, and ableist. Well, and also, sorry, like uh, if you want the Democrats to win, that's better for black voters. And like, and also, theoretically, and, and they're talking about they're like they're like you know like the, the especially about the pod johns this is this is my fa- this is my favorite thing this is this is more delicious than vanilla ice cream <laughs> is like all the people who are like these rich white bros who probably don't even wash their legs and smell like wet dogs and <laughs> don't season their food like they're rich and like they're going to be like insulated from any of the evil things that Trump is going to do and they just hate that Biden humbled himself to select a black woman as his running mate and he stepped aside and like but black women are he the, the even soul of the Democratic Kamala Party anymore. and this is this is astonishing to do at a time when Joe Biden has a lower approval rating among black people than any Democratic president in modern history. He's going into an election with a, like, based on polls, the lowest percentage of approval among black voters in American, modern American history. A super majority, before the debate, a super majority of black voters <laughs> wanted him replaced. <laughs> it just, I mean, talk about people saying things without anything to back it up. That, uh, Who's that guy who did, uh, I previously know, know him for doing vor fantasies about Kamala Harris <laughs> eating Mike Pence. <laughs> do, you, do you know who I'm talking Wait, about? No, no, I don't think so. Would, I'm going to get in trouble if I try to say his name because I don't remember it. But, um, he's, he's just like, he's like a regular shitty left liberal pundit. And he was like, he just flat out said, well, black people are with him. And then like, just every poll shows that's completely not fucking true. Like, it just, it's so shitty. It's so shitty and fucking cowardly. And just and repu- racist, and, and, I'm sorry. And repulsive to have this shitty, stupid opinion that is like, you're just doing it to preserve your own access so you can go to the White House Christmas party. And then saying, actually, this really stupid thing, I think, I copied it from black people <laughs> and I'm doing it as a favor to them. And it's not even fucking true. <laughs> yeah. This incredibly stupid thing. I think, well, you would be surprised to know it was invented by black people. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. And like also, but it's also setting up the, setting up the, the logical follow-up would be like uh, this horrible candidate that's going to, uh, that, who like literally if we replaced him would be and with anyone would probably beat Donald Trump. He's like the only guy that could lose to Donald Trump, even after Donald Trump got shot. They're like, yeah, you can thank black people for that. It's just like uh, the, the comment I made about have you this thought is this out. Yeah, the yeah. comment I made about this is like the Democrats have spent so much of the last nine months talking about human shields that you can tell they're starting to see the appeal of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They also already punched this button. Remember, like the first campaign around, it was like uh, vote like a black woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just the entire thing, the entire way these people talk about like black voters. Like, they're a combination of Spartans and, like, oracles of Delphi. (laughs) It's so fucking weird. It's so fucking strange. Uh, Just, like, go back to Bernie and AOC. Didn't AOC just, like, begrudgingly acknowledge that Israel is committing a genocide? How do you do that and then go... But the guy and the guy doing it yeah. is great. I He's saw, gonna I, sign yeah. the pro act yeah, if we yeah. re-elect yeah. him. I saw the guy, genocide I, I saw guy. I saw one of these like sort of like liberal democratic mouthpieces this guy. I think his name was Wajad Ali. And he that was, too. That yeah, was yeah, the war yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he, was, he was he was on Democracy Now. And and like he was like to, to, he was there to speak to the position of why Biden can't drop out. It's too risky. He's our he's our candidate. He's our nominee. Which again. This is a position I support and agree with here. I'm on his side as far as that goes. But in making the case, he was like, yes, like, I, I think obviously what's happening in Gaza is a huge stain on his record. And it's something that I would qualify as genocide. And it's a moral stain on his but, presidency. It's like, yeah, you could say the Holocaust was a moral stain on Hitler's legacy as well. You know, it's just like, how do you, you how do you got to vote for him for real? What is the compartmentalization that leads you to admit that like, yeah, yeah, he is doing a genocide right now, but like, we still got to vote for him, you know? Yeah, it does not withstand one second of <laughs> scrutiny. It is, it is just so self-contradictory. It cannot be. <laughs> <laughs> and also AOC, uh, you know, in response to it, it was like Politico, where like all the news reports that are coming out, like qu- quoting anonymous senior Democratic officials who are just like basically saying, don't even have the election. It's over. We're resi- <laughs> we've resigned ourselves to a second Trump term. And then her comment on that was like, oh, like 
if you're resigned to this, it's time for you to step down and be replaced with someone who's willing to fight against this horrible dictatorship or whatever. So it's just like, wait, wait, so like who who has to resign now? Like who needs to step down? Yeah, what? Like, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Like under what condition is it good to tell someone to leave? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, when they're when they're actively deleterious to the ticket and the political project. Interesting. If you don't uh, if you don't vote for Biden, the genocide just got ten feet, <laughs> ten ten months longer. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, like it, it has been wonderful seeing. I mean, like, look, the Pod Save America guys. It's not they're not just stealing our jokes and stealing from our book. They're not just plagiarizing our book. I mean, the the. The, the people responding to them are plagiarizing them, talking about us four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't it feel nice to just like not be um, lumped in with with pod bros for once? <laughs> like you, yeah. you, you guys for one rare uh, uh, time are not being lumped in with oh, oh white pod bros. Well, they're actually, they're actually. I've been looking. They're hurting around. the brand. I, I've actually been looking around. <laughs> They've been calling me a black woman. <laughs> I I I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to brag about it. I'm not a braggadocious person. But a lot of, you know, Blue Wave and 1959s were like, this guy is a black woman. <laughs> With what he knows, uh, how good he is at voting, we love him. And I was like, thank you. Thank you. Look finally, at all the finally someone knows. They said, look at all the mean things he said about these awful rich white pod people. Um, he... This man is mixed race. He's Russian and German. <laughs> we love him. Yeah, no, we we stand against Michael Clayton. You are yeah. not replacing Joe Biden on this ticket. We we stand against him. Biden shield wall. We must protect <laughs> yeah, the yeah, battle yeah. box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I know for some for some of you, this election isn't a big deal. This election is the only thing between America being a little battle fella. <laughs> And not being a little battle fellow. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, I mean, maybe if you're rich and white and make all your income from a podcast and were born between the years 1982 to 1990 and you're white and you're in entertainment and you're bi-coastal <laughs> and you do a podcast with other white men, then maybe it's not a big deal for America to be a little battle fellow. <laughs> Because you're rich. But for me, a black woman who's a white man who has a podcast, it's not. I'll be the first guy killed in the battle box. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, uh, the reading series here tonight, uh, I'm going to give you the headline and then the author. But, like, you know, it's one of our favorite authors. The headline, Felix, it, it, it touches on our favorite historical uh, cliche. Headline. American Caesar, Pennsylvania Rubicon. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> fuck. Oh, my God. By Rod Dreher for the European conservative. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. How's he going he to make this gay? <laughs> He's like, I had to watch six hours of gay porn to arrive at this take for some reason. <laughs> yeah. To understand what Trump went through, I put myself into a giant PVC box and I got <laughs> farted on <laughs> by a woman in a dog mask. <laughs> So Rod writes, the annals of American history will the have annals, <laughs> more like anyone. Yeah, thanks. The the annals of American history will have few artifacts as potent as the iconic image taken by Associated Press photographer Evan Vucci of a bloodied but defiant Trump mm -hmm. rising from a symbolic grave, fist raved, and framed by an American flag. This election is likely over. Trump went down as a fat mouthing a fat mouthing politician. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, a fat mouthing politician and rose it's as not a, a pagan thing. demigod. If Jesus Christ and George Washington came down from heaven to replace Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on the Democratic ticket, Trump would still likely win in a landslide. Now, though, even Shakespeare would have hesitated to write a script like this. That is that is mixing metaphors on a level oh, that is just like well, he, he, he's naming the big three right <laughs> yeah. off the bat. Yeah. Also, so, like you know, he's a he's a convert Catholic, and he's saying like uh, I wouldn't vote for Jesus. Convert Orthodox. Oh, sorry, sorry. After converting to Catholicism, uh, don't he's, care. He's on, his don't third, care. Or, he's on his third or fourth conversion by now. Send send this man to conversion therapy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, what he says, he he rose a pagan demigod. Maybe Rod is getting into Hellenism. Oh, <laughs> or he's he ran into Varg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's that, a, he's a man about Europe. Yeah, I mean, he probably like he probably got kicked out of like 
some weird Hungarian party where like a 27 year old man was telling him about how gay blues clues is now. <laughs> and he ran into this dynamo of a man who lives in his car next to a field. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, tell me about your ideas. He moved in for a few months. When Trump rose from what could have been his deathbed, had the bullet passed only a millimeter or more to the right and pumped the air with his fist shouting, fight, fight, fight. I felt a sense of electricity pass down my spine. See, I cannot read everything you write as gay as hell. You're getting pumped. You're, uh, you're, you're rising from your bed. I don't know. Uh, it was, he got butterflies like his crush touched him. <laughs> <laughs> many Americans no doubt did, and many European conservatives too, sick and tired of left-wing bullying. It is early yet, and we don't know the writing. Uh, we, don't know, we don't know at this writing what the motivations of the shooter, Thomas Matthew Crooks, might have been. I like that they gave him in the middle name to get the, the full assassin, the full assassin you profile. You got to have three yeah. names. You got to have three names. Um, Might have been. Yet speaking emotionally, and people vote on emotions more than on dispassionate reasoning, this is what it feels like to me. This is the pattern that I see. And then there's a long list of bullet points, the first one of which is, they wouldn't leave evangelical Christian Jack Phillips alone to bake his cakes and run his business. What? Oh my God, he's still on <laughs> He's still talking thing? about that. He's still talking he's about it. Fucking <laughs> uh, they won't let parents remove pornographic books from school library. I mean, like he just goes on and this is the long list of, you know, Rod, uh, bo bo bogeyman. Then he says, who are they? Not a conspiracy. There doesn't have to be a conspiracy. It's all out in the open now. This is the American ruling past, ruling class. In part, what the American neo-reactionary thinker Curtis Yarvin calls the cathedral. Oh. They run the institutions, even the woke military, which fewer and fewer normal young men want to join now. Yeah, fewer and fewer young men would want to join the military because of wokeness and not just the military. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Felix, I know you love the like the VJ Day style photo of the guys coming back from Operation Protective Guardian, like kissing their wives yeah. and being like, it was really traumatic. They fired. They fired. They fired yeah. back a few times. Oh my god! They said the Navy is figuring out how to deal with these guys' trauma. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's how you know the military is too woke now. It's just like the fucking Lieutenant Top Gun wouldn't do that, and he had friends who died. His friend died, and then he almost killed that friend's son. <laughs> I mean, I, going on here, he says, whatever is to come, Associated Press photographer Evan Vucci's staggeringly powerful image of, a, of bloodied Trump with the flag called to mind the famous photograph of U.S. Marines raising the flag over Iwo Jima in the waning days of World War II. Calm down. Calm down, Rod. Okay. <laughs> Calm okay. down. Okay. I, I know someone but, who's, uh, at, who's at full mass right now. <laughs> What was it like 30,000 Marines died in like the first hour of Iwo Jima? Like, all right. Yeah. Versus one like 62 year old died by accident. <laughs> it's, it's amazing that that man even lived through the COVID uh, epidemic. So this he's been on borrowed time for a long time. The Rosenstahl shot marks the beginning of Pax Americana and the rise of the American empire masquerading as a republic. Uh, I, I guess I guess uh, Rod has been reading Gore Vidal as well. Uh, the Vucci <laughs> more, image, more uh, plagiarism of yeah, your life. The Vucci image, by contrast, comes at the end of the same, with a drained and divided America in retreat from the world and from its own founding principles. The two images side by side are mythic bookends to what looks like a multi-volume history of the rise and fall of a great nation. That America operated as an empire under the form of liberal democracy only goes to show that history, unlike God, writes crooked with straight lines. What? What? The, what? <laughs> Melania speaks English as like a, her 12th language yeah. and was way mo co more coherent. She's sad that Trump didn't die and she did a better job like capturing this moment. This she's, is she's a billion, billion times more articulate and less like, again, she's, She's not mixing 10, uh, 10 different metaphors in a Vitamix it's, like Rod is doing it's right now. So it's just so jumbled. Yeah. Really, you yeah. really shouldn't cut your prep with anything. <laughs> when, when, it, you know, when, when it was time to um, you know, sit strong and valley forge, Trump knew that he was four yards away from a touchdown. <laughs> but when the bases are loaded and you bunt, you don't just uh, win 15 love. His election is sure to be a slam dunk now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he says, the young man who tried to kill Trump might have thought he was going to save America from Caesar. It is entirely possible that in doing so and failing, he will have delivered the country into the hands of one. And the revolting behavior of the American ruling class and its woke janissaries. Again, another, another, another piece of history we're throwing in here. 
what makes them janitaries? Like, are they being kidnapped as children <laughs> and like being trained in woke schools? <laughs> Uh, the, and the revolting behavior of the Amer of American ruling class and its woke janissaries who spent the past 40 years marching through the institutions will have inclined most of us toward welcoming him. I hope I'm wrong. Again, it's early yet, but yesterday felt like a Rubicon moment. Why do you hope you're wrong? Oh, yeah, Isn't why, that yeah. what you want? No, he's like, he's like, he's like the right wing version of all the, like every single major democratic politician has to issue a statement over the past couple of days being like, we pray for his speedy recovery and we reject political violence in all his forms. He's like the a day before this happened, you were telling everyone he was Hitler part two. Why right. are you hoping for a speedy recovery? Shakespeare saved me from what I want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he says, yeah, we have all been wondering for some years now if the center would hold. Now we're about to find out. So he's throwing some Yates there at the end as well. Just how many, yeah, how many yeah, literary and historical references? In that. Yeah, how many cliches can you possibly he, pack like, in? Do you, you don't want the center to hold. You're saying that America is run by a, a group of, I don't know, I guess marauding Pedophilic. uh, pedophiles who, who, who uh, act disgusting and are killing the republic. But I really hope they hold on. I really hope they're able to withstand this. What are you saying? Rod uh, is desperately trying to communicate to his falcon, but it's just he's not getting any <laughs> response. He's just flown away. He's flown the coop, never to return. But you know, this election, it's 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 deuce. But you know, Trump is serving for love right now. <laughs> Trump, Trump is serving. <laughs> Uh, in that photo, Trump was serving cunt, Loki. <laughs> he was. Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, his, he his, was. his hair was a little mussed up, you know? That could have gone really badly for him. Like, all that motion. Yeah. Like, for, like his hair. His hair looks perfect. I thought he was yeah, going to. Yeah, that was really impressive. Well, and, and the Secret Service shuffling him off the stage. Like, he's, you know, he's like 6'5 and weighs 3,000 pounds. So, like, he could have easily lost his balance and fallen over and crushed a Secret Service guy. Yeah. Killed in the line of duty. <laughs> uh, what do you guys think is the thing with the shoes? Is Did he actually get knocked out of his shoes by the Secret Service? Or my theory is he takes his little shoesies off when he gives a speech to let the piggies breathe while he's uh, standing up there for an hour and a half. What? Okay, were the shoes, were they like dress shoes or were they like, what were they? They were Skechers. Uh, <laughs> Skechers. Or the yeah. 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 <laughs> they were, they were, they were uh, those shoes with rollerblades built into them. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 I think Heelys. they were, they were yeah, yeah, I think they were uh, the, uh, kind of standard dress, dress shoes. If they were like leather sold standard dress shoes, I mean, he, those those rallies are like four hours he long. He goes for it fucking does, ever. It does suck dick to like stand around like an asshole in like leather sold dress shoes. Mm -hmm. So he probably like, yeah, they probably developed a hologram that makes it look, look like he's wearing shoes. But well, that, he's totally every, barefoot Every man in Congress now it's does. It's legal. It's legal. Yeah, it's legal. legal. <laughs> And but Biden is the only candidate who promises to, to legalize barefoot, and that's why he's staying in the race, and why we all are duty bound to support him. It's our job to win this election, not his. Legalize it. It's our job to win the presidency for Joe Biden, not his. He is when you're when a commander falls on the battlefield, you you pick up the mantle of responsibility and you take it over. It's like Spears and Band of Brothers, and we're all Spears. We're all Spears. Uh, Biden is. Who was the guy who went? Was it Compton who like went crazy during the war? <laughs> oh yeah, the yeah the Neil McDonough character. Yeah, Buck Compton, and then he did terrible things in Tennessee. <laughs> he did some really bad stuff when he got back home. Uh, all right. Well, uh, to close out the show, we have some uh, announcements. We do. We got some announcements. We got some big things to announce. Big things coming. Big things coming. Watch this space, or rather, watch this space tomorrow morning at ten a.m. Central Time. Because tickets will be going on a sale for our first live show this year. It is Chapo Trap House. Well, the mobile contingent of Chapo Trap House and Truanon will be in Chicago at the Park West Theater on August 21st for the Democratic Convention. Yeah. Join us in the smoke-filled room where we will be setting the course for the future of the Democratic Party, which is Joe Biden, by the way. We're there. We, I want to be clear. We are going to Chicago to support Joe Biden yes. and fight any effort to get him off the ticket. <laughs> yes. we, we will start a riot if they replace Joe Biden. If they, if, they, if, if they overturn the will of dozens of Democratic voters in the primary, uh, we will riot. We will start a riot. It's 1968 all over again. You guys are, are going to be again. like the Brooks Brothers guys who descended <laughs> on Florida to make George Bush win, except, I don't know, you wear chambray shirts. The Felix Brothers riot. Yeah. yeah I have been mastering the art 
of hypnosis. <laughs> and I will use the full force of the Chicago Police Department to come down on anyone who tries to install the madman who gassed his own people, Gruesome Gavin. <laughs> we didn't vote for him. Oh, my God. I, I missed this one. Uh, Biden defends his rhetoric in interview following assassination attempt on Trump, but says it was a mistake to use the word bullseye. <laughs> I missed Nailed that it. one. <laughs> Nailed it. The winds, the winds just keep coming. Damn. No one has been better equipped for this moment. <laughs> uh, anyway, just more details on that. Yeah. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, there'll be a ticket link in the description of this. I think this episode will come out before then, but uh, there's no pre-sale. There's no anything. Uh, it's just tickets go on sale 10 a.m. Tuesday. Uh, what day is tomorrow? It's July 16th. The show Park West, Chicago, August 21st. Chapa with Truanon. We haven't figured out exactly what the show is going to be, but we'll, well, all, we'll all be it's there. Be it's, 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 bound, it's bound to be quite exciting. Is it, it is it 10 a.m. Uh, God's, God's time, a.k.a. Central, Central time. Standard yes, Time? Exactly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Great. And then uh, number two most important announcement, new merch on sale. New Chapa Trap House merch, including our, our famous Zapata oil hat. Our new merch can be available, can be found and bought at chapotraphouse.com slash store. And we'll have some, uh, we have some new merch drops coming up soon, including some movie mindset gear that yes. I hope you all will enjoy. Store Ooh. lives at chapotraphouse.store now, uh, starting with some classics, new designs rolling out through the rest of the year. All right. Well, um, until, th until next time. Just Do we want to kick it over to our, uh, our interview? Oh, yeah. We have, we have a bonus interview at the back end of this episode. But until next time, just just... Pray, pray, pray for the country. Just pray we don't cross that Rubicon. Just if you find a Rubicon, just take a dip in it. It's hot yeah. out, but yeah. don't cross it. Don't cross the Rubicon. Don't fly into the Death Star. <laughs> uh, use the Force and uh, Stifler's mom. Pax, Pax fuck, Stifler's, vibes. fuck Stifler's mom of Yippee democracy. Kaya, yeah, yeah, battle bot motherfuckers. Yes. Get out of the battle, fella. Don't be a battle, fella. <laughs> Shinji, pilot the I'm battle, balls fella. I'm that battle, fella. <laughs> And while we were there, uh, we met my current guest uh, who tabled at our show and then uh, scored us out on the town to a night at Santa's Pub for a legendary night of, of country karaoke. So please uh, welcome to the show, Mina Parkinson. Mina, welcome. Hi. Thank you so much for letting me uh, speak on here. Well, Mina, uh, I know you're working on a, uh, a little project you guys are cooking up down there in Music City. Uh, why don't you tell us about what's going on in Nashville right now and what you're working on? So kind of like the immediate moment that we're focusing on right now is our new project um, called Burn Debt, Not Books. It's through, uh, I'm a member of Middle Tennessee Democratic Socialists of America, and our campaign is called Quilt. And our new project underneath that umbrella is called Burn Debt, Not Books. So what we are doing is we are helping raise $10,000 to abolish $1 million worth of medical debt here in Tennessee. So how, how does that work? How does $10,000 erase uh, $1 million of medical debt? Yeah, it's uh, pretty fucked up, huh? So the way that medical debt works, or I should say the way that uh, medical debt is collected is a combination of, of, a, of a few different things. It reminds me a lot of like a Ponzi scheme and uh, a few other uh, like su supply side economics, let's say. And uh, so the way that it works is that you have your hospital, you have your provider, you owe them money. Say you just had a really large surgery, you owe them now $100,000. You start paying them if you're somebody like me who also owes tens of thousands of dollars uh, of medical debt. Then what will happen is your hospital, your provider gets impatient uh, and decides, you know what, I am going to package up this person's debt along with all these other people's debt, and I'm going to sell it to another company, usually a debt collection company. Um, and they will sell that for pennies on the dollar. So, you know, I might have uh, $100,000 of debt combined with, you know, 10 other people who also have $100,000 of debt. They sell it for an extremely small amount so they can get their money right now because they have whatever that they need to do. Um, and then this debt collection company gets that for significantly cheaper. Your The amount that you owe doesn't change whatsoever. What that now means is you are now paying this debt collection agency, this insurance company, the same amount, the same amount every single month. And if you are somebody who has medical debt, you've likely experienced the harassment, the haranguing that you get from medical debt collection agencies. Um, and then that continues. 
It isn't just like that one stop. They'll continue to do that. Once they've made their profit, you know, they'll, they'll buy it for pennies on the dollar. Once they've made their profit off of that, what they might now do is sell it to another debt collection agency. And then the cycle continues until they've squeezed enough blood out of the stone until they've made as much money as possible out, out of just fractions of, of fractions of dollars that they spent. And now they have made a profit. Uh, and you continue to owe the same amount that you always have. Pay close attention, entrepreneurs. There is so much wonderful profit to be made in the world of medical catastrophe and collateralized debt uh, resale. But um, how mm-hmm. has the campaign gone so far? And like, how do you go about um, erasing this medical debt or just buying it back? Yeah, great question. So to answer your first question, it's going really well. Um, so we launched uh, back in late June, uh, officially on June 21st, but our really big kickoff was on June 22nd. Since then, we've already raised uh, just like $9 short of $6,000. So we are confirmed to be abolishing $600,000 worth of debt. So every dollar is $100 worth of medical debt that we're going to be abolishing. I know, right? And this affects the poorest people in our state. And one of the, you know, I speak to a lot of people, one of the leading causes for homelessness is, are things like medical debt. It's the reason why people are prevented from getting, uh, getting back into a place where they can live, getting a stable job. Uh, in terms of actually purchasing it, so there is a group, and I definitely advocate for other people who are interested in this project to uh, reach out to them and start their own campaigns. It's called Undo Medical Debt. Um, They actually handle all of the purchasing of that medical debt. There's been some groups across the country. I'm thinking of one specifically in Pennsylvania that was able to raise a bunch of money and uh, abolish, similarly, uh, a lot of medical debt for the people who need it the most. Now, uh, you mentioned that uh, in conjunction with Middle Tennessee DSA and Quilt, the name of the campaign Mm -hmm. is Burn Debt, Not Books. Now, I knew mm-hmm. Nashville was music city, but what, what's the mm-hmm. deal? Why do they hate books so much? We got to get rid of all the books just because mu- music is just too powerful. No more books. What's, yeah, go- what's going on with that? We're done with that shit. That book shit, I'm done <laughs> with it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, what we're seeing right now is across all of Tennessee. I mean, just this past weekend uh, and going to be continuing throughout the rest of the month are these uh, neo-Nazi groups who are harassing people. We have really high profile politicians who are opposed to anything queer related in any sort of library. I mean, there are states in this country where you basically have to go there with a driver's license in order to access the library now. And Tennessee is really accelerating close to that. I mean, there has been a lot of violence against queer people, not just in my state, but in other states across this country. So, you know, the, the moniker in itself is in reference to the, uh, the fact that we are seeing book bannings across this state and we're seeing them across the rest of this country too. Uh, Do you have any examples of books that have been banned or attempted to be banned from Tennessee public libraries? I mean, basically anything that has to do with sexual education. And we're not talking about like, queer identities or, you know, gender or anything like that, but like literally like trying to like anatomy books, things that talk about reproduction. I mean, sexual education in this country is abysmal, but especially in places like the South, uh, it's pretty alarming the ways that like people don't have sexual education anymore. And now those types of books are being banned from libraries you know, being banned from curriculums in schools just generally, where now it's an absence only education, where we all know and probably have experience, like you can tell kids not to have sex. They're still like high schoolers. High schoolers are still high schoolers. Like it's still going to happen. And the best thing that you can do is just have people prepared and equipped with knowledge. So you don't have, you know, there is a rising case. It's not, it hasn't outpaced other uh, other identity or other sexual uh, orientations, but amongst straight people, especially young straight people, a lot of people are starting to contract HIV, which is now developing into AIDS because they simply don't have the type of sexual education and the knowledge that people probably like. I'm I'll be turning 32 later this week, and 
even though I, I, you know, I've grown up here, I had a pretty standard sexual education. Um, and that's just about like the anatomy and, and the body and things like that, let alone any sort of like fictional depictions of queer people generally. Right. I mean, good luck studying ancient Greek uh, pottery if you live in Tennessee in the near future. But yeah, like, um, know. You know, I've been, yeah, I've been very disturbed by, you know, like book banning efforts. But like what's more than that is, like you said, the, the attack on sexual health and sexual education. But it seems to be all being done under the banner of banning pornography and associating mm -hmm. any depiction of human sexuality or even just any the sharing of any knowledge about basic human anatomy or sexuality with pornography and with the you know, sexualizing of children and what, 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 what do you got, what are you doing to, uh, to, to fight back on, on, on that front in terms of preserving knowledge and, and public education and just access to books and they, they reflect the range of human experience and culture. Yeah, this is, uh, so I'll give an example. Like we try to do as many community education events as possible. So you know, you are, I, I don't know if you're a fan of this movie, but I certainly am. Paris is Burning. We had a great screening of, of that of this weekend. Uh, the classic, the seminal classic, Paris is Burning. If, if any listener has not heard that yet or seen it yet, I should say they need to uh, finish listening to this podcast and then go watch it. Um, but uh, in terms of like education and things like that, um, so I mentioned that I was part of Quilt. So Quilt is an acronym. It stands for Queers United and Liberating Tennessee. Really, the main project of that is to develop queer people into organizers, into labor organizers, into housing organizers, into leaders of their community so that they can actually be equipped to be part of these fights. You know, historically, these are the, the kinds of people, queer people, I, sh I should be specific, who have been left out of these fights, who have been marginalized from the labor movement, from the housing movement. Uh, and had have had their rights compromised. Um, so like, for example, we have an organizing school that's going on right now. It's been going on for, gosh, several months at this point. It won't be ending until like early October. But going over those like basic organizing skills that queer people and organizers generally need to know. And also, like I will say for the Burn Debt Not Books campaign, I mean, this is this is very much like hearkening back to as a queer person, as a trans woman, like our history. This is lesbians and gays support the minors. If you know another movie wreck, if you've never seen Pride, <laughs> yes, of course, fantastic. Pride. Yes, go watch it. Go watch and as long it. as we're talking about it, uh, everyone watch Paris is Burning, uh, Pride, but then also watch Robert Altman's Nashville, a movie uh, <laughs> that, that gets even more relevant given the events of the weekend. But we'll be talking about that on the main show. Uh, Mina, I want to I want to say like. You said like some of these basic organizing tactics. I'm just wondering, like, when when you say that, like, what do you mean? Because I also want to mention the fact that being in Nashville, you you find yourself sort of if you're involved in queer organizing or queer education, you find yourself somewhat in the crosshairs of local Nashville media conglomerate, the Daily Wire. So I'm just wondering, like, what what are the kind of organizing that you can do to organize like against these you know these mountebanks and charlatans? <laughs> So I, I, you know, I'm a big believer in, in kind of these dual fronts of the labor, you know, you have a job, you have a house, you need to defend these things and you need to be part of a union as, as best you can. You need to form and, and cultivate those skills. So we, you can do anything as basic as like how to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation to like actually get your coworker to do something. So you are not just this, you know, armchair Marxist sort of like, you know, waxing poetically about the normies who probably have like the same issues as you do going on to things like how does your you know where are the points of control points of control or points of power within you know your housing complex who can help who can't who's opposed to you know what you are trying to do and who's supportive how can you leverage those types of things into building a successful campaign and, you know, you you had mentioned uh, our good friends, uh, The Daily Wire, Matty Walsh, Ben Shapiro, uh, no longer Candace Owens, I suppose. Uh, no longer. Tyler. <laughs> uh, uh, she's entered free agency. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Freelancing is a hell of a gig, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, this has been going on for several years. Uh, you know, when I initially pitched this to uh, Chris, 
you know, this was way back a few years ago. And then I followed up since we started this campaign, but you know, that had, you know, they have really started to stir the pot over the past few years. And it's become kind of a boiling cauldron at this point. Um, you know, I will give the digested version uh, of the most recent events. So last year, uh, Vanderbilt University Medical Center uh, was subpoenaed, so to speak, uh, by our state's attorney general to hand over uh, thousands of unredacted um, medical documents. So this includes people's names, medical records, conversations that they've had with doctors, pictures, things like that of trans people or supposed trans people who had taken. And this is this is the state. This. this is the state doing this. So yes. I guess that's a, that this, if the state does it, it doesn't violate HIPAA or medical privacy laws. Well, there was a report uh, that was released uh, on April 16th. I have it right here. It's called How State Attorneys Generals Target Transgender Youth and Adults by we- Weaponizing the Medicaid Program and Their Health Oversight Authority. And Vanderbilt University was actually the uh, first one identified in that because they really rolled over and showed their uh, soft pink belly. Uh, basically, the state's attorney general uh, just asked really nice and said, can you hand over all of these unredacted medical documents? Pretty please. And they did. it. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's like a three. There's like a politeness. It goes a long way. I know. I know. Uh, that's that Southern gentleman. <laughs> uh, yes. So they just handed over these documents. And this was actually, you know, the reason why I brought this up is because the Daily Wire was the ones who really started to provoke this even back in what was that 2021 there was the rally to end child mutilation uh there's a there's a funny quote from me in a bunch I'm of glad they finally came out against circumcision I know literally I was making that joke the whole time and nobody thought it <laughs> was as funny when we were counter protesting I got quoted in in some newspaper that was like like why are you here like, how do you feel about being here today? And it's like, well, it's Friday. I wish I didn't have to do this, <laughs> but here I am. Um, so like, yeah, like obviously the, um, the context of the, the portrait you paint here, is just, you know, like, especially if you are queer or trans youth or adult or really anyone uh, can seem quite uh, intimidating or like, you know, like everyone's feeling a great deal of anxiety and fear at, at this current moment. And I'm just wondering, like, what, what if any advice do you have to people or young people of you know, any gender or sexual orientation, but particularly young queer and trans people who are feeling you know, intensely vulnerable right now? Like, do you have any advice about like, how, how, to, how to fight back or how to deal with that or just how to like what, what to feel right now or how to like not let I'm sorry, not, how, to, how not let the, like action that can counter uh, feeling? Yeah. Um... You know, I first started organizing several years ago and really queer organizing was the thing that uh, really made me hopeful about the world. I think if that there are any sort of similar projects, whether it is focusing on queer issues specifically um, or not, if there is housing, uh, if there if there are housing campaigns, if there are labor campaigns, I think you need to not stare at the internet all the time and have these constant fears about what's going to be taken away from you. Uh, Being able to do something about it, being able to fight uh, is the thing that will keep you going. And even if you are a young kid, even if you are, um, you know, a teenager who's listening to this, like you deserve to be here. Um, And, you know, I, I think that there's, uh, there's that old quote that's like, you know, the moral arc of history bends towards justice. Yeah. Um, the thing that we like to append on the end of that is the moral arc of history bends towards justice, but it does not bend on its own. It's going to take a hell of a lot of us to get our hands on it and start making the world that we want to live in. Uh, Mina, before we let you go here, um, for anyone listening to this right now, if they would like to contribute or get involved in any way in the band, uh, Burn Debt, Not Books, or Middle Tennessee DSA, or Quilt, or like, well, what should they do? Where should they go? Sure. Um, so we can, we can start at the top. If you would like to very kindly contribute to our campaign, you can head to quilt-tn.com slash debt. And I'll make sure to send all these links and stuff over to after this. Um, So you can head to quilt-tn.com slash debt. 
Um, you can also follow uh, Quilt on Instagram as well. I believe it's Quilt underscore TN. Um, as well as you can follow uh, you can follow me on Twitter too at Get in the Device. Um, so if you have <laughs> any questions, if you have any device related questions about you know how to fit in, does it is it a two two seater or four seater? What kind of device we're talking here? Please follow what at is- Get in the Device. Look, we're not talking about bottom surgery today, all right? I know this is about healthcare. <laughs> um, so follow those. Um, yeah, go to quilt-dn.tn.com to learn more about what Quilt is doing, to get in contact with us. Um, and there are links to uh, Middle TN DSA uh, as well, uh, which is, you know, I was one of the founders of the chapter. I've been involved ever since, and it's one of the greatest things that I've ever been a part of. And it is that thing that keeps me going. Um, and I definitely advocate for people to get involved in not just, you know, the organizing that I'm doing, but the organizing that other people are doing across this country, even if you're not in Tennessee. I guess my last question is uh, book related. Like, if there's anyone out there who, like, what are you doing to, I mean, are, are there resources available for people who want to uh, have access to not just books about sexual education, but just good books that are currently on the chopping block of, you know, a kind of noxious culture war? Are there, are there book related resources that people can avail themselves of? Um, you know, personally, I am not super aware of those types of things. I would probably contact your library to see what books are on those lists uh, and then just sort of go from there. You know, I will also plug it myself selfishly, but I am a bookmaker as well. Um, so if there is any sort of book that you would like made that is perhaps banned in your local library or is very hard to find, check me out. It is one of my three jobs. So if you would like a handmade book, please reach out. I got I got a lot of medical debt, so I have to have a lot of jobs. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to uh, get that $50 a month for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, Mina, uh, best of luck with the campaign, best of luck with the bookmaking, and shout out to everyone in Music City, Tennessee involved.